Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come from the academic world. McGill Queen's University Press have published this book on a very well-known judge called Lord Mansfield. This is called Lord Mansfield, Justice in the Age of Reason, and it's been written by Professor Norman S. Poser. It's a very good book. It's got a lot of very interesting stuff in it. Some splendid photographs in the middle. You've got a great deal of bibliographical information at the back, and then you've got a very useful index. The content of the book itself is, is quite um, standard for this sort of work. You can see pretty heavy prose in many ways, but extremely well written, which is what we would expect. And it's something I think you can treasure, certainly if you are a law scholar and interested in legal history. Now, we've written a review of this book, which we've called uh, At the Birth of the Modern Common Law, Lord Mansfield Was His Country's Pride. Uh, quotes being his country's pride, taken from um, Alexander Pope. What we've said about this book, though, is as follows. If you're an English lawyer, whether barrister or solicitor, you'll have heard of the name of Lord Mansfield without necessarily knowing very much about him. If you're an American or Canadian lawyer, interestingly, you probably know a little bit more about him, but not that much. Uh, more of that a little later. Therefore, it's a pleasure for us to review uh, Professor Poser's new title, which is a biography of this renowned personality, rightly described as 18th century Britain's most powerful judge. Now, many of us as law students will remember Lord Mansfield from our early days as uh, students, because his name does feature very much uh, as part of legal history. So it's perhaps surprising that uh, we're reminded until the publication of this book that there hasn't been a full-length life uh, story about Mansfield written in modern times and this is where the book itself comes in very nicely. Such was Mansfield's influence on the development of English common law that as the publishers have pointed out his decisions continue to influence the legal systems of Canada, Britain and the United States of America to an extent unmatched by any judge of the past. Or, in Poser's words, his influence on the law of the English-speaking world, evidenced by the fact that the United States Supreme Court has cited his decisions over 330 times has continued into the 21st century. That's some record and it's interesting bearing in mind how many centuries back we're talking of, 18th century Mansfield. It may come as a surprise to some but not to others that Mansfield has been referred to by at least one historian as quote arguably the most famous and influential Anglo-American judge of the modern era. And that's quite an act to follow. Anglo-American might not have been a term which Mansfield would have applied to himself, of course. With a reputation as a defender of the existing order, Mansfield was a vigorous and outspoken opponent of the American War of Independence, calling the Boston Tea Party an act of high treason. His militant opposition to the colonialists dictated British policy during the 1770s, uh, says um, Poser, and it led, quote, to armed conflict and the loss of the colonies. Obviously history, uh, we all know what, what happened since that time. So putting all this in perspective, however, Mansfield in most respects was a moderniser. His judicial decisions led to the modernisation of British commercial law and the eventual abolition of the slave trade in England, a stance which would certainly have put him at loggerheads with many of the founding fathers of America, many of whom may have disapproved of the unpleasant aspects of slavery, but who nonetheless owned slaves. That's always been the big issue, the hard case, if you like. An intensely private person, Lord Mansfield nevertheless loved his busy social life and cultivated innumerable, 
innumerable contacts in the political sphere as well as religion, business, literature and the arts. Described as his country's pride, as I indicated earlier, by um, Alexander Pope, his circle, as Mansfield's circle, included William Pitt the Elder, Sir Joshua Reynolds, David Hume and the biographer of Dr Johnson, James Boswell. Let me uh, conclude by saying, in writing this carefully researched and entertaining biography, Professor Posner has also painted a vivid and detailed picture of the turbulence and intellectual ferment which characterised the world of the 18th century Enlightenment, hence the title Justice in the Age of Reason. This is an important new book which will doubtless interest historians and the general public as well as legal practitioners. I'm certainly delighted to have it and I'd like to thank all concerned for producing what is a, a real treasure of a book. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye.